this month's update. It turns out I'm not very good at logistics. I also have pretty poor time management skills. And I'm going to try a slightly different style of video. February 2023 and a slightly different video this month. I'm still waiting for some mounting hardware for my wind turbine to be able to swap from my vertical axis Atlas 4 to the horizontal axis Magnum 5. Perhaps someone with a metal laser cutting company would like to sponsor an episode so I can get parts faster. Just an idea. So I'm going to share with you an unboxing video which isn't really an unboxing video it's more kind of like a, a quick overview of what Tessup shipped to me to replace my Atlas 4 which was dying. And then we go in the absence of a wind turbine update video, it might interest some of you to look at my personal energy usage and see me do an end of year review of 2022 versus 2021. I'm going to go over all the things in my life that use energy and talk about what I've done to optimize them. Future us here. I just want to first off apologize because I realized this update is actually going out in March and not February. So let's take a quick look at what Tessup sent me. One of the first things that strikes me is Tesla definitely know how to pack their equipment. It is very, very well packed and there is almost no movement. The uh, expanding foam has looked after all the parts extremely well and the box is very durable. The first part that we remove is what appears to be the pole that holds up the wind turbine. And then this is followed by the legs of the pole. This is genuinely the first time I unbox this so bear with me. The next parts appear to be the wind turbine blades themselves and then we get to the actual generator unit itself. This was actually incredibly heavy um, although definitely lighter than the Atlas 4. If I was a betting man I'd say this is probably somewhere in the region of about 20 to 25 kilos um, and you may notice that the unboxing video here is slightly sped up. It's running about 1.5 times Part to be removed is the nose cone, and this is nicely packed, nice and smooth, and that is rapidly followed by the tail fin, which I believe mounts on a pole at the end of the turbine itself. Next up is the rotor, which the blades mount to. Uh, it's also metal, like the tail fin. Start digging in the box, and we have some miscellaneous fittings. Not sure exactly what these are for yet. Okay, putting those fittings to side, it's nice to see that Tessup have also sent me an additional charge controller, just in case my existing one is part of the failure. What included was the mounting brackets for the charge controller, and that is the total contents of the box shipped to me. So time to pop it all back and make it secure and safe until I can get all the mounting hardware ready for installing it. Because the Magnum 5 needs to be able to rotate, it is pole mounted and so that's going to necessitate a completely new mounting solution for the top of my uh, truss and connection to the tower. Again, the plan here is to utilize the mounting hardware provided by Tessup to try and use their recommended method and hopefully I can take a aluminium plate and bolt the tripod that it ships with to that plate and then mount that plate directly uh, to the top of the truss. Okay, I'm afraid that's the end of the updates to the wind turbine project, um, but I did still want to put out a video this month, so we're going to try something a bit different now. I know that a lot of you have appreciated a data-driven approach to these videos, so that's the approach I'm going to take for my energy review. Okay, first things first, I'm clearly horribly in the way, so let's move me over here. That's much better. Okay, 2022 energy review. I'm going to take a look at how my energy usage in 2022 compared to my energy usage in 2021, which obviously was mid-pandemic. I'll cover the technology and energy plans that I'm leveraging, which covers home electricity and gas, as well as my transportation via our EVs. Let's take a look at where we started last year. First, I feel the need to point out that data provided is for my specific use case only. This is the real data collected by my various apps and exported to a common format presented to you here today. I'm in the southeast of the UK, 
The original building has stood since the mid 16th century. For reference, our home is about 2300 square feet or 214 square meters. It had two goats living in it until 2010 when we converted it into our home using all the latest building techniques and materials. It is south facing and we've made the most of this with very large south facing windows to maximize winter heating. All the glass is double glazed, although I think possibly some of the window seals may have failed by now. We're running two EVs, which we charge at home. This is included in the electricity costs. Heating is via a combi boiler, which runs on natural gas, which I plan to replace soon with a non-fossil fuel variant. We have a whole home ventilation system with heat recovery for energy efficiency. And this is the basis for the data which I'm presenting to you today. My very first solar system was installed in November of 2010 when I built the house. Currently we have two solar PV systems totaling just under 10 kilowatts peak theoretical output although this is rarely in excess of 7 kilowatts due to its orientation, which is designed to maximize all the daylight capture rather than peak output. I also have two Powerwall home batteries with a total of 27 kilowatt hours of storage, of which I keep about 10% reserved for all times for backups. In terms of energy supplier, I use Octopus Energy and I'm still on their May 2020 Legacy Go tariff, which means I get about five pence per kilowatt off peak rate for four hours a day with a 17 pence per kilowatt rate during the day. I expect the energy tariff to jump significantly in May of this year because that's when my current deal runs out. The GO tariff requires a smart meter with 30 minute billing intervals. Having 30 minute billing is essential to getting time of use uh, pricing, uh, which is actually really important for keeping the cost down. Those of you familiar with the channel know that I've been working to add a wind turbine in 2022 and whilst this was not in a position to be helpful in 2022, I'm hoping that this will actually provide meaningful impact to my 2023 data. Let's start with the nasty fossil fuels that I still have left, natural gas. Here's my usage for the year in orange compared with my 2021 usage in green. Unfortunately, we're still reliant on natural gas for our heating and our hot water. I do not have a hot water tank, so only heat what we use when we use it for both our heating and our hot water needs. Looking at the data, we can see that the heat demands of the English countryside account for the vast majority of the usage. May through October is pretty flat with just hot water use for zero heat requirements. We do also have a couple of gas burners for cooking on too, but we minimize the use of these as much as possible. You can see that the heating demands in 2022 were much higher in January to February and again in October to December specifically. This resulted in natural gas usage and therefore costs being higher in 2022 compared to 2021. So totaling this up, we can see that in 2022, I actually had an uptick of about eight or 9%. That being said, the tariff remained the same. And so the usage increase resulted in a cost increase too. 2022 used about 790 kilowatt hours more natural gas than in 2021. This could just be down to environmental factors or a slightly colder winter. I mentioned the biggest jumps being in February and December compared to 2021. My aim is that hopefully a project I can tackle in 2023 is to get rid of the last remnants of fossil fuels in my life and move to some form of electric heating although I may need more electrical storage first before I can increase my electrical usage. So 2022 cost about £80 or $100 a year more than 2021. Bringing that all together, we can see the cost increase for 2022 for natural gas usage. And we can probably put this down to just being a colder winter uh, in 2022. Um, so let's bring all that together and compare all the data. So looking at all the data, you can see that the total cost of natural gas for the year went up by about £80 or $100. This gave us a monthly average cost of £86.07 for the year. Now, I wonder how that's going to compare to our electricity usage throughout the year. Let's take a look at that next. And remember, we're running two electric vehicles too. So there are no petrol or diesel costs and the running costs of the vehicles are included for the most part in the data here, excluding obviously public charging sessions, which would have been paid for separately. But for most of the year, we're driving on sunshine and charging at home. The most notable change here is that we use significantly fewer uh, amounts of energy compared to last year. 
with the exception of April. I'm putting that down to us changing our old electric uh, Mercedes B250e EV to a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which virtually doubled the energy efficiency of that EV. You can see the change in September 2021 data when we picked up the new EV and then the reductions throughout 2022. It's also worth noting that we have a full footprint basement, which means that when it rains, the sump pumps kick in and these tend to draw somewhere between three to 500 watts of additional energy during heavy storms. So whenever it rains, our energy consumption just kind of jumps up that extra level. Uh, in this time, we also migrated the home uh, automation system away from a, a legacy Crestron system uh, to my own homebrew version of Home Assistant. And that's made a, actually a significant change to the base load of the house as well. And so that we've managed to reduce the base load of the house from 1.1 kilowatts down to about 700 watts. So making these few small tweaks has uh, saved us actually about 2,300 kilowatt hours of energy during 2022. As you can see, the costs are down all months of the year, except for March, which could have been purely down to a worse month for weather than the previous year. The average monthly cost is around about £46.21 for electricity. And that is all our home usage, but also all of our travel, remember too, as we charge our EVs primarily at home whenever we have excess of solar and also on the overnight tariff. That 2,300 kilowatt hour saving equates to about £250 across the entire year of 2022. At the overview of our electricity usage here, I think we've made a great improvement in electrical efficiency in 2022 compared to the previous year. Let's now take a look at our total consumption for the year. Comparing the headline figures for 2021 and 2022, we can see the cost of natural gas per kilowatt hour remained pretty static, which is unsurprising as it's not something that we can make ourselves, and the monthly average increased about 8% year on year. However, the cost of electricity for us dropped by over one pence per kilowatt hour in 2022 as we generated slightly more and we used slightly less and our monthly costs went down considerably. In fact, versus 2021, our average monthly cost is down nearly 30%. So let's take a closer look at that. Looking at what we generated ourselves in 2022, we actually generated nearly one megawatt hour more energy than in 2021. April was the only month compared to the previous year in which we generated less energy. 2022 was a fantastic year for solar generation. We exported nearly one quarter of a megawatt hour to the grid and we got paid nearly 350 pounds more for the year. That's right, because of the feed-in tariff we are on from 2010 when we originally signed up, we got paid not just for what we exported, but also what we generated and used ourselves. This was also index linked for 25 years. So we still have 12 years left on the scheme, which will expire for us in 2035. Across 2022, we were self-powered for almost 51% of our electrical needs, up almost 10% from 2021. Now let's total it all up. Overall expenditure in 2021 was actually that I was paid £150 uh, for the year after bills by the electricity company thanks to the feed-in tariff that we have. Now in 2022 this increased significantly even though our gas usage increased the savings in electricity and the increase in the feed-in tariff payments more than offset leaving us nearly £650 up for the year which is not bad considering we had an energy crisis. Okay Let's take a look at the breakdown of my travel next and see how that was affected. Okay, starting with my own car, I supercharged for over 75% of the energy I used, which is because I have free supercharging for life, being a pre-2016 car. Um, so I really tried to make the most of that and maximize it. I covered about 10,900 miles in 2022, including two road trips, one to Northern Italy and then another one all around Europe across six different countries. There's actually a video of that trip uh, that, I, that I produced and put on the channel previously for those of you that are interested in EV road tripping. I'll leave a link in the description below for that one um, and maybe I'll link it up here somewhere. 
About 20% of the time I charged the car at home on solar power and for the remainder I paid to charge it at non-Tesla rapid chargers. Um, I think this was only during one particular trip down to the UK West Country. The running costs for the year consisted of an annual check, which is known as an MOT in the UK, um, some new wiper blades and some wiper fluid, and I think that was it, totalling about £96. The Tesla app estimates my charging costs for the year at about £128, but the reality is that it was actually lower than this as I didn't pay for the solar energy I put into the car when charging at home. The savings versus petrol for the same mileage was about £3,350 for the year, so the equivalent of just two pence per mile total running costs. So next up is my wife's car. You can see that almost 93% of her charging was actually done at home. She only covered 4,699 miles in the year, and the maintenance was purely some washer fluid at a cost of around about eight pounds. We have to pay for supercharging on her car, so we only really use the superchargers for a single trip to Belgium, and again on a trip to the north of England. This accounted for about £90 of the estimated £220 on charging. The petrol cost equivalent would have been at over £1,200 for the year, so that saved us almost £1,000 exactly for the year. This worked out at around about £5 per mile driven. Now I thought it would be interesting to compare to the previous internal combustion engine vehicle that I ran. Um, this was a Honda 2004 Civic Type R that I last ran back in 2018. I've also grabbed fuel prices from the RAC Foundation's fuel tracker to adjust the values to 2022 pricing to try and give a more accurate comparison. In 2018 I actually only did about 4,330 miles in the Honda which was very similar mileage to that done by my wife's car last year, although it had 130,000 miles on it previously. Maintenance for that year included the following items, um, typical of running an older ICE vehicle. So we had to replace a headlight bulb, brake pads, there was an annual B service, uh, annual check known as the MOT in the UK, uh, VED or as we used to call it, road tax. Um, EVs in the UK are free currently. Um, oil top up, washer fluid and wiper blades. Nothing too crazy, um, but this still totaled £990 for the year, which is pretty normal for a used car. Uh, additionally to those, um, we covered 4,330 miles at a cost of about £1,030 in 2018, which adjusted for 2022 would have been about £1,250. This means that in 2018 it cost me about 47 pence per mile to run, and adjusting that for 2022 inflation, it would have cost me about 52 pence per mile to run. Therefore, running the Honda was about 10 times the cost of running the Model 3 and about 20 times the cost compared to my Model S. Okay, so let's wrap up. In 2022, we used about 8% more natural gas, but about 30% less electricity from the grid compared to 2021. This meant that our monthly cost for gas increased by £7 a month, but our monthly cost for electricity decreased by £20 a month, leaving us about £13 a month better off. We optimised the home baseload and automations and we changed to a more efficient EV. We exported 200 kilowatt hours more to the grid whilst generating almost 1,000 kilowatt hours more electricity than in 2021, which meant that we got paid over £300 more than last year, whilst having an overall reduction in our energy bills, leaving us about £650 up for the year after paying for everything. Take that energy crisis. If you're interested in the data, I can make that publicly available to you. And if you have any questions, why not drop a comment below? Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Most of you are not, so if you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you click the subscribe button and drop a like. Remember that there is also a Patreon available too to help support the projects, and this gets you access to our exclusive Discord server with behind the scenes looks and more information about the projects I'm working on. And additionally, my patrons are also sharing some of their projects with the community too. I'll see you for the next update soon.